right? Is that all right? <laughs> that was fine, Senator. I think if we could get one with the family, say, over by the fireplace there. Fine. You're going to be very pleased with these, I know. All right. Now, let's see. We... Jim. Jim, get lost. <laughs> oh, sure. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Senator, would you sit down there on the couch by Mrs. Fairchild? Thank you. And uh, have the little girl over with you, Senator, please. Come on, honey. That's fine. And Mrs. Fairchild, would you get in close to the Senator? Thank I'd you. I'd be delighted. And son, sit down there by your mother, will you, please? Well, that's very good now. Well, you boys don't need me, but remember the press conference starts in five minutes, so hurry it up. All right, now. Big happy smile. Daddy's just been appointed a senator. Isn't that great? That you smile, huh? <laughs> How are you, Sam? Well, I'm fine, Jim. You're a long way from the state capitol. Thank you. The governor thought I could be of some help to the senator. Well, I'm sure you will be. You gonna let him say anything? <laughs> now, now, Sam. The duties of a press secretary are merely to see... See to it that the official mouth is never open wide enough to put a foot into it. Burke, Sunstar. And how are you, Phil? Inquisitive, Jim. Very inquisitive. How are you, Sam? I'm pretty good, Phil. Hey, look, Sam. Don't bother with the biographical notes. I can sum them up in one word for you. Perfect. Fairchild's real presidential timber. No fooling. I mean, after a couple of terms in the Senate for seasoning. Elliot Fairchild. It's a good name. Born on a farm, in the right state. Selected his parents very well. Not too poor, not too rich. Very honest, church-going. State college, state law school. Conservative and successful law firm with conservative and loaded clients. Just a minute. Elliot looks so good with a pipe. <laughs> well, it's a nice and formal test, Senator. Go ahead, hold it. Handsome man. Beautiful wife. Beautiful children. Must have made some beautiful money. All of it, I'm sure, in the right way. Ames Globe. Hi, Jim. Hello, Fred. Johnson, the news. Hi. Hello, Johnson. Thank you. I was betting two to one the governor would appoint Carlson. Carlson's too well known to please the governor, especially his position on the farm policy. Any hint on how he stands on policy? Yeah, for everything against nothing. Sounds like the late Senator Bannister. Well, Fairchild is completing his term. If the Senate approves the appointment. A formality, a mere formality. Hello. How do you do? Your paper. Uh, the Helen Falls Times. The Helen Falls Times. I'm afraid, Mr. Um, uh, Boxley, Cliff Boxley. I'm terribly sorry, Mr. Boxley, but the press conference is open only to the newspapers on this list, and I don't see the Hallam. Uh, Hallam, Hallam Falls Times. Oh, hey, you see, Mr. Fairchild was born and raised in Hallam Falls. That's upstate. Naturally, the upstate folks, especially in his hometown, would like a little story. May we make a note of your press card for sure. the record? Fine, fine. I'm sure Mr. Fairchild would be delighted to have someone here from his hometown. Hallam Falls Times, Mr. Cliff Boxley. Just make a note I okayed it, will you? Yes, sir. Here you are, Mr. Boxley. Oh, thanks. Go right in, Mr. Boxley. Conference will start in a few minutes. Thank you. Sorry, boys. About time to start, so let's wrap it up. Oh, just one more, Jim. There'll be more chances. Senator? Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, <laughs> Thanks, Senator. You're welcome. Thank you, Senator. Thank you. Thank you. Well, you can relax now. Well, I'm glad that's over with. Wasn't so bad, was it, Mike? No. Why don't you take the children to the zoo? It'll be pretty tame for them after this. I'll see you back here at dinner. Bye, Donnie. Bye, dear. Bye, Mike. Pumpkin. Senator, thought you might like a breather before going inside. <laughs> I need one. If you have any doubt about a question, just look toward me. I'll be the heavy. That's what I'm here for. And, of course, you can always no comment the tricky ones. As for any questions about foreign policy, I'm sure you can talk around them generally without committing yourself too specifically. I might surprise you, Jim. Answer a question or two myself. 
Yes, of course, Senator, but the governor thought it'd be wise if your first press conference got across your personality. Well, they can't print just smiles, Jim. But don't worry, I won't embarrass the governor. No, of course not, sir. Well? Looks like my farewell to privacy. In a sense, yes, sir. I'm not so sure I'll like it. Every move subject to criticism. Not only for today and tomorrow, but they may dig into my past. And there's nothing to worry about, sir. There are no skeletons in your closet. What makes you so sure? The appointment by the governor and all. I'm sure. You're right. They covered all of the closets, most of the attics, and some of the cellars. Then there's nothing to worry about, is there, sir? No, there isn't. I guess I'm ready. Oh, one thing more. Sorry, I almost forgot. The governor sent word that if any questions were asked about Senator Bannister's farm bill, he thought it would be wise to suggest a continuation of a similar policy. He thought that would please most of the people. I see. All ready, sir? Right. Boys, may I present Mr. Fairchild? Gentlemen, I'm pleased to know you collectively. In the days to come, I hope to know you individually. My office will always be open to you as my home is today. Now, make yourselves comfortable, gentlemen. All right, Smoke. Go right ahead. First, I would like to say that I am honored at having been appointed to fill the unexpired term of the late and illustrious Senator Bannister. I shall endeavor to serve the people of this state vigorously and determinedly. Now, Jim Stevens tells me you have a question or two you'd like to ask. <laughs> Johnson, news. Mr. Johnson. Do you anticipate any objection to your appointment on the Senate floor? No, sir. Thank you. Burke, son, stop. Mr. Burke? Mr. Fairchild. Some people were rather surprised at your appointment. Surprised, but not shocked, I trust. I'm sure that most people thought the governor would appoint a major public figure to fill out the term. I sincerely hope that his choice of me will not prove to be a disappointment. Ames, Globe. Mr. Ames. Mr. Ames. When did you and the governor meet, sir? We've known each other socially for some years. You supported him in the last campaign? Yes, sir. Wasn't that when you really became such good friends? That is true. Stacy, Harold. Yes, sir? Uh, Senator, I guess we can safely call <coughs> you that. Oh, thank you, Mr. <laughs> Stacy. Uh, Senator, you plan to support Senator Bannister's policies? Yes, for the most part. What about the other part? What part of the other part, Mr. Stacy? Foreign policy, for instance. I don't think that question is... I've got it, Jim. Yes, sir. To answer your question, Mr. Stacy, or uh, rather not to answer it, the Foreign Relations Committee is a very strong arm of the United States Senate. Its members are well-versed in foreign affairs. I feel that it would be presumptuous of me, a new appointee, to make a statement of policy at this time. However, I am very anxious to meet with the members of that committee and study the problem. That's not saying very much, is it, Senator? We often repent of what we have said, but never of what we have not. I believe uh, Thomas Jefferson said that in one of his press conferences. <laughs> That's a very erudite observation, Senator. Do you plan on bringing air addition to the Senate, Mr. Fairchild? I believe it's already there, Mr. Ames. <laughs> <laughs> what do you plan to do about the late Senator Bannister's farm policy? I will introduce it at the next session, just as he would have done. Are you going to fight for it? No, not unless it's amended. Mr. Fairchild? Yes, sir? I guess you don't remember me, Mr. Fairchild. Cliff Boxley. Of course I remember. Representing the Hallam Falls Times. It's nice to see you again, Cliff. It's been a long time. Yes, it has been. We'll have a long chat later. Gentlemen, uh, Mr. Boxley's from my hometown. Senator, excuse me. I haven't asked Mr. Fairchild my questions. And it's possible they might interest you fellows, too. That is, if the big papers and the news services care about the human side. <laughs> We're human, too, Boxley. What is it, Cliff? Well, I... I don't have to tell you about Hallam Falls, Elliot. Small town like ours, a couple of thousand citizens. Everybody knows everybody else pretty well. And uh, when we can, we 
We like to know the kind of human beings our officials are, the way we know our neighbors. You always said it was just as important to know a man's character as his opinion. Perhaps more important. Like, uh, like a fellow says he's for some controversial bill. Well, he's not going to get it through if he's the kind who can't stand up to fight, is he? What are you trying to do, write an editorial, Boxley? Just what is your point, Cliff? The point is, what kind of fellow are you? Whether you're the same kind you used to be. We'll go over that later, Cliff. Leisurely. Let's tackle it now. Oh, let's get on. Oh, let's. Aren't you fellows interested in the senator's character? Deadlines, too. We don't all work on weeklies, Boxley. Okay. Okay, I'll cut it short. Elliot, I want to tell you something that happened in our town, and I'd like your opinion of it. And there were two boys, both of them plenty smart. They were rivals for the state scholarship fund, college. Everybody knew it was between the two of them. Also, everybody knew that one of them, well, let's call him Tommy, had the edge on the other boy. Maybe you, uh, you recall that scholarship? It was very important, both in money and in prestige. Yes, of course I remember it. But I don't think this is the time or the place to discuss it. Oh, I think it is. Now, the second fellow, Tommy, was at a, at a roadhouse when it was raided. And as a result, the scholarship board decided his character wasn't up to par, thereby eliminating his chances for the scholarship and giving it to the second fellow I mentioned. Mr. Boxley, I think you've taken up enough time. There are other men who... Let him talk, Jim. Thanks. Now, the real point is, the second fellow maneuvered Tommy to the roadhouse that night. The police got a tip that a, that a wanted criminal was holed up there. The police didn't find the criminal. They found Tommy. Now, the big question, Mr. Fairchild, do you think a boy who would pull a thing like that to start his career off would someday make a good senator? You don't know what you're saying. He rarely goes back to Hallam Falls. Can't say I blame him. His mother and father still live on the old farm, working. But if you fellas went to Hallam Falls today, you'd see that old farmhouse with a fresh coat of paint, new furniture, fixed up a couple of weeks ago, just when he gets to be good newspaper copy. I think you've gone far enough, Cliff. Gentlemen, any more questions? Uh, wasn't the house painted? Yes, of course it was painted. What else, Boxley? <laughs> Maybe the next chapter's kind of corny to you city fellows. I guess you'd sort of call it the girl he left behind. Fine, decent girl. Who kept waiting for him because he'd asked her to be his wife. Kept waiting until he met a girl with a lot of money and important social position. So he, he married her and forgot the girl in Hallam Falls. And that, gentlemen, is your senator appointee, Elliot Fairchild. Gentlemen. Let's retrace Boxley's accusations. I believe he intimated that I was an opportunist who married for money and social position. You can forget that part, Mr. Fairchild. I don't think it's necessary. I understand. You're very kind. I'll make it brief. There on the mantel is a picture of my wife taken shortly after we were married. That she was a beautiful woman then, and is still very beautiful, needs no elaboration. I'm reluctant to speak of my personal life publicly, but the situation forces me to. I assure you, gentlemen, I did not marry my wife for money or social position. We love each other deeply. There's never been the slightest hint of infidelity or discord. I'm sure even our merest acquaintance can attest to that. As to the other girl, yes, there was another girl. I think most everyone who leaves a small town leaves a girl behind. In my case, it was just a school kid romance. That's his word against mine. As for her waiting for me, I don't believe she waited any longer than it took me to leave the town. She was married a few weeks later. The glib lawyer adds a touch of humor. And as to the house being painted a few weeks ago, I'm afraid I'll have to plead guilty to that. And that it was painted because some pictures might be taken. Yes. But don't we all spruce up when pictures are taken? New suit, shirt, tie. How long has it been since you've been back to Hallam Falls? It's been quite some time. But you insinuated that my parents had been neglected, abandoned. Miss Hastings. Yes, Mr. Fairchild. I believe I dictated some personal letters last week. Monday, I think it was. Do you have the notes for that day? Yes, sir, I do. Would you bring them here, please? Yes, sir. 
I dictated a letter to my father. Would you find it? Yes, sir. Read it aloud, please. Dear Dad, this is just a reminder that we are expecting you and Mother on the 1st of July as usual. And don't forget to bring the home movies of the new pigs. The children would be heartbroken if you didn't. I'm glad you had the old place painted as per my request. There may be some pictures taken of it soon. Just why, I cannot tell you at this moment. Something big may be happening to me real soon. New paragraph. And will you please stop trying to repay the loan, as you call it, that I advanced for... Don't be honest, Hastings. Yes, sir. Thank you. That's a good prop letter to have lying around. Almost too good, huh? All right, let's get to the main accusation. That I framed another boy to win the state scholarship. Let's see you prop your way out of this one. Alum Falls is a small town upstate. I doubt if many of you have ever been there. But you've been to many other small towns just like it. If you have, you know the hardest thing to keep in a small town is a secret. Well, Alum Falls hasn't changed much in 20 odd years. Back in 1930, we had prohibition, like everyone else. The usual roadhouse was out of town a ways. There wasn't much to the place, kind of run down at best. But since you could get a drink there made it pretty exciting. And the fact that it was considered out of bounds that much more desirable. One afternoon, our chief of police had a phone call, a tip that a certain criminal was at the roadhouse. The caller wouldn't identify himself, so wisely the chief kept him talking and had the call traced. Wait a minute, wait a minute. What are you trying to sell us? Are you men going to listen to this cooked up melodrama? What is there about the story you object to, Cliff? Why don't you just admit you made the call to frame the other boy? Why don't you admit you were the other boy? He used the name Tommy when making the accusation. Actually, there was no Tommy. Cliff and I were competing for the scholarship. He was the boy at the roadhouse. All right. What if I was? Does that make your tipping the police off honorable? You informed against me for your own gain. That isn't true. You told the police there was a criminal at the roadhouse, but you knew I was there. No, Cliff. The roadhouse was raided, but the criminal was not to be found. Naturally, they took the names of the people at the place. When the names were made public, the scholarship board disqualified Cliff. Believe me, I didn't want to win the scholarship that way. A moment ago, I told you that the chief of police traced the anonymous call. He traced it directly to the roadhouse, specifically to a telephone near the bar. It didn't sound like a legitimate tip, but since this particular criminal had been reported in the vicinity of Hallam Falls, they had to investigate. When they got there, he wasn't there. Who made the call? Here's where the story takes a strange twist. There were five people at the bar other than the bartender. And only one had used the phone within the last hour. The bartender remembered because the caller had asked for change. Was it the girl, the girl who was with Boxley? You answer that, Cliff. Sure, sure I'll answer it. Whole stories are fake. They never traced any call. If they did, they traced it to you. He informed on himself. Why? Why would I do that? Tell me, why? A psychiatrist could tell you. You're a sick man, Cliff. You were sick then. You never wanted to leave the small town. You were afraid to face the big world outside. You couldn't have turned that scholarship down directly. No. You had to invent a psychological crutch for yourself. An early defeat that you could look back on with kind of a sick pride. As I've said, it was a well-kept secret. The people who knew about it wanted to help you. You always refused that help. Can you prove that story, Senator? All right. Cliff, you say you work for the Hallam Falls Times. Yeah. Sure, you old man Howard. You haven't worked for him for over 10 years. How about your credentials? How about your press card? The date on it. Go ahead. I'm sorry, Cliff. I didn't want to have to go this far. All right, gentlemen, shall we continue? You've never let me alone. Not for 25 years. 
Put the gun away, Boxley. Stay where you are. Stay seated. But you too. I know what you're thinking. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a dumb rube from a small town. All of this could have been mine. Boy, it is mine. Right now, I own it. I, I own it. Uh, I'm not giving it back to you. Of course you own it. I don't want anything that's yours, Cliff. I never have. You can believe that. One more move. All right, Cliff. Go ahead. Go ahead, try something. Don't just stand there. Go on. What do you really want? 20? 25 years? Yeah, that's what I want. That's what I want. That's what I've got. I I'm standing where you are, Senator. Oh, I know you think it's impossible, but... Oh. Oh, I... No, no, it's not impossible, is it? I, every, everything that you've worked for all your life. And now, now, it's mine. Any last words, Senator? How many do I have? Well, uh, when, uh, when I feel like uh, cutting it off, uh, I'll do it. <laughs> With this. Hey, Boxley, that's very, very good. Hold it, will you? That's it. Now, just a little closer. That's it. Easy, Boxley. No, he's going to hurt you. Let me alone. Let me alone. I wish I could say something more than thanks. I don't even know your name. Henderson, Sun Star. We've got a hero on the paper. Are you kidding, Burke? I just took the picture. The senator took the gun. You think you got a picture? Well, if I don't, I'll shoot myself. Do I have it? Could, uh, could we destroy it? I'm sorry, Senator. That's the property of the Sun Star. What happened here this afternoon is news. I'm afraid we'll have to use the picture. I'm sorry the story has to be told. We kept it a secret in Hallam Falls. Guess that can't be done here. That's right. Those days are over, Senator. You now belong to the people. And as far as the people are concerned, I think they will be well served. Thank you. Well, gentlemen, I don't suppose there are any more questions. Yeah, what time is it? I've got a deadline tomorrow. Well, 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 well,